do the Las Vegas Raiders need to fire Josh McDaniels? It's an interesting question, so we're going to kind of dive into that uh, in this video. Talk about, does that need to happen? Also, just what's going wrong with this Raiders offense in general? I mean, it's been a uh, it's been a tough one, a tough season so far for the Raiders. Well, let's start off with this play, kind of to, to talk about the McDaniels of it all, because I do think that there are some some problems with the McDaniels offense, uh, you know, listen, it's been very successful as a whole, so you can't, uh, you know, knock it too much, and even if you want to say, well, a lot of that was Tom Brady, sure, but Mac Jones came in last year and had a good rookie season and has looked much worse uh, in the Matt Patricia-led offense, so okay, maybe that's just, Patricia isn't very good, I don't know, but a play like this is always a play that, you know, I feel like my philosophy on the kind of offenses I like to see, it's just very different than the kind of offense that you'll see, uh, you know, McDaniels run. He likes a lot of plays like this, which is, you know, you have two receivers lined up to the offense's right, running deeper routes, and it's really designed to get the ball to the halfback. You clear out stuff over, you know, underneath and get the ball to the halfback. You're setting up things underneath. To me, again, personally, I, I love more of a Bruce Arians kind of, you know, downfield passing, no risk it, no biscuit style approach. That's always been uh, my preferred offense, but that's fine. We've seen that, you know, different mindsets can still, you know, create really good offenses. We've seen McDaniels have plenty of success. We've seen people like Arians have a lot of success and everyone in between had a lot of success, depending on what your style is. But on this play, this is where one of the areas, one of the reasons why this type of play can fail. Carr is going to take the snap. Carr is going to uh, first look to his left, but I believe he was always planning on throwing it to his halfback here, who, I mean, you know, this is covered well by the Colts. That's kind of one of the issues is that you design this play to clear out underneath and get a check down, which hopefully can gain some space. But if someone takes away the check down, well then that's a tough situation for you. You're only, when you design a play designed for two receivers to run setup routes, just for one receiver to get open, when that player doesn't get open, basically the whole play is a bust. As you see, Carr scrambles out, tries to make it work, and just does not hit on it. And I think you could argue two different things there. One, you could sit here and argue that that's a coaching issue. These plays aren't working. I think the other argument, though, is that you know these plays aren't going to work 100% of the time. I think the reality is they're just not working enough is probably the issue right now. And whoever you want to blame, maybe that's not a coaching issue. Maybe it is a, a talent issue for the Raiders. But on that play, the Colts seemed all over it. That seemed like a coaching play, at least. So that was definitely true. On the other hand, I think that it's fair to say that for the Raiders, some of it has just simply been, they haven't been playing well. And Derek Carr hasn't entirely been playing well. Here's an example of, you see, uh, it's Devontae Adams who, yep, they're going to look in his direction, which again, rightfully so. He's clearly the best part about their team right now. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm still in the camp that the Raiders won the Devontae Adams trade and just everything else has gone haywire for them. But I think that that trade worked for them. But anyways, you're at this spot where, you know, you see where he's going to get kind of in a gap in coverage. Derek Carr is going to take the snap. Derek Carr is going to look towards the bottom of the screen. You see that Devontae Adams is open right here. Listen, it's not going to go for a first down. They have to get all the way to the 46-yard line to get the first down, okay? They're in a tough spot Try to get this first down on a third down in very, very, very long. But at least you can play some field position, right? And hey, who knows? I mean, Devontae Adams catching a ball, maybe only having to make one guy miss. Crazier things have happened. However, Carr's throw, I mean, he was getting hit. So again, the offensive line gave up the pressure. So who, who do you want to put the blame on? Uh, I would still say I would like to see Carr make that throw. He did have to throw it off you know, off balance though. So you could forgive it if you want to, but that's an example of the play that McDaniels drew up worked and just everything, whether it was the offensive line or the quarterback, the talent wasn't able to make it work. Or even something like this is another thing you could argue is a talent thing, not a coaching thing where, you know, I, I am still a believer in no matter what the coaching situation is, unless it's like an Urban Meyer situation, which I don't believe this to be, typically talent wins you football games. Coaching helps for sure. But at the end of the day, I think people do put a bit too much emphasis on coaching. I think a lot of times coaching gets the credit for like once just something lucky happens. Of course, coaching still does matter a great deal, but I think talent matters more and a play like this could be argued as an example of it, where I put the yellow line on the screen. That's where the Raiders are trying to get to the 35-yard line right here. It's cover two man they're going up against. So what should you look for against this coverage? And you see it's 
probably cover two pre-snap. So that's what you're expecting. So something maybe quick over the middle. That should be something you're looking towards. Derek Carr takes the snap. And in fact, it looks like this was almost designed to get the ball to the halfback. You have a wide open halfback at this point. I mean, Derek Carr is not looking in this direction. I'm not entirely sure why he's not. You know, I don't love to bring up these types of plays because I feel like we don't know what the read is exactly. Uh, we don't, you know, this is Amir Abdullah, who's the halfback. We don't know if this play was designed to get Abdullah the ball necessarily. There's also a chance that he doesn't get the first down. It could be a tackle, you know, catch and tackle short of the first down. But I would still like to see it. And honestly, even higher up on the top of the screen, you have Devontae Adams, who also could potentially be more open. Carr's going to instead throw this to a completely covered Mac Hollins. I, I don't get that decision by Derek Carr. So again, this stuff does happen. This is football. But actually, Adams also raised his hands later in the play as well, saying that he wants the ball. So it's not ideal when you have multiple receivers raising their hands to say that they're open and Derek Carr throws to the unopened guy. Instead, that was on a third down and they were not able to convert. They had to give the ball back to the Colts. So again, these types of plays, just missing on a few of them can be the difference in being a, you know, a winning team and a losing team. Going over here, you know, there's been this argument of, does Devontae Adams in some ways hurt the Raiders? Which seems stupid on, you know, first glance, but, you know, to play out that argument and to give it its fair due, there is some logic behind it. You could argue that the fact that they put such, such amount of attention on Adams, it actually hurts them. Like, for example, it would probably hurt the Raiders if they had Adams and threw, it, threw the ball to him literally every single play. Like, that would make it more difficult. So there obviously is a balance. Do they throw the ball to Adams too much? Well, when you see this situation, a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside with Adams, he's pretty much always going to get the ball. Derek Carr takes the snap. He is going to uh, eventually look in that direction. You see that Adams is not really open. Carr actually hesitated a little bit. He's making a throw now, and that little bit of a late throw is what resulted in the incompletion, again, on a third down, where that would have been a first down. Maybe you could sit here and argue that uh, they shouldn't keep giving the ball to Adams. To me, the throw should go to Adams. My only complaint is I actually think he should have thrown it a little bit earlier and maybe just, you know, completely steer into the curve and say, no, Adams is our guy. We're going to trust him in that spot. If he's one-on-one -on, -one on a third down, uh, we're making that play. But as a whole, I think that was mostly just good defense, which happens. Again, stuff like this is, if you're a believer in that argument, maybe this is something where it's a, a zone coverage play. You have two receivers running deep routes. Kind of the main idea is that uh, the one route is going kind of more over the middle, uh, it, which is it's actually not quite as deep as it, I uh, put on the graphic. It's going to be kind of, uh, you know, it'll cut around that spot, but just more of a flatter cut. But the idea is you have two receivers running deep enough that the safety can only cover one of them. Either go over the middle or stay deep and cover Adams. For Carr, you throw to the other guy. Derek Carr takes a snap. He runs a play action, looks down the field. And you see right here, the uh, you know shallower route is definitely covered up. But down the field, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Adams. And I would like to see Derek Carr make this throw right now. That's kind of my biggest critique about Derek Carr as of here is, you know, he's missed some throws. I'm willing to believe that that's going to you know, correct itself. I just want to see, it's like Derek Carr, you know, the team's not doing so good. Take some chances. And I think that him making this throw, I would have liked to see it. Instead, watch how long he waits before finally making the throw. By the time he did, another Colts player was able to get in position and that could have been intercepted. If before it, you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you know, I, I think that that's the move you want to make. Either make the throw or don't. But once you decide not to make that throw, you can't make the throw. You can't hesitate and then make the throw. That's just bad news. So, uh, should they fire McDaniels? You can, I mean, you if you want to, you can. I don't think it would hurt much if you did, but I also think that the issues are more than just McDaniels. And maybe some of these issues are, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a coaching thing that we don't see behind the scenes that are creating some of these issues. Maybe McDaniels is saying, hey, no matter what, on third downs, throw to Matt Collins on that play. I don't know. I, I'm not in the room, so I can't say for certain. So uh, for the people that are in that room, I think they can be the judge on whether to fire, fire him or not. I kind of understand both. But as of right now, I certainly think it's fair to say it is not just a coaching issue. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.